This is Ron Crouch. Welcome to my second virtual studio visit. So today I'd like to talk to you about a tale of two paintings. Large and small. So, um, I like doing both large and small paintings, although I've done large paintings over the years. I'm now kind of to a situation where storage is becoming an issue. I can barely get anything this large in my house, much less hanging on the walls. But be that as it may, still fun to do them. Um, if a large painting is like an epic novel, small painting is like a short story. And I enjoy both. So most of the time I'll do the small painting first and then move on to do a large painting. But other times, just depends. Sometimes I'll do a large painting and there'll be things that I didn't do, that I didn't work out, that I want to kind of explore further, but I don't want to do another large painting. So I'll do a small one just to kind of take those uh, paths not taken uh, and kind of get that out of my system. And so it is with this. Um, so anyway, uh, instead of me talking for a long time, which is boring, Let's just take a look and see some of the progress shots that show how I got from start to finish on both the small painting and the large painting. This is the first state of the uh, small painting, which is 12 by 24 inches. You can see that what I've started to do is lay in the value ranges where the lights and darks are and indicate shapes, just the major compositional elements, a real reduced palette and the paint has been applied very loosely. I've diluted it to the point where it's almost like a watercolor. But you can still start seeing the painting emerge. I could have stopped at this point, but I was more interested in seeing where this was going to end up. So I pressed on to the next state. At this point, you can see that I've started adding more detail. Still pretty loose. I start working from the edges and the back forward and towards the center. So the walls, for example, have now become more defined. And some detail in the chair has been added. The cat has a little bit more detail and the pile of covers next to the figure now beginning to have some more definition as well as the pillow behind. And then the headboard at the back of the painting, again, starting to get a little bit more detail. The paint has become a little bit more opaque and then same with on the, the right side, the lamp, the uh, other areas, the paint is more opaque. There's just more detail. And here we are in the finished state. Again, you can see that I haven't done much more to the background and the elements on the right side, the lamp, the computer, the garbage can. Not much more done on that. The figure of the cat on the chair, I've done a little bit more work on, but the rest of the chair, not a lot of work done on that. I've done more detail on the cat in the foreground, and as well as adding some additional color on the, um, the blankets, and uh, just added some more definition to the figure, added some skin tones, and put in just the green highlight that comes off the figure's back, and then just a little bit of detail to define the computer. But compared to the original state, there's not a lot of more work done on this, just a little tweaking. So now let's take a look at the large painting. The large painting is 40 by 70 inches. And what I've done is started by delaying in an initial mapping of where the lights and darks are using burnt sienna as an underpainting. I almost always will use a burnt sienna to do the underpainting for the large pieces. And at this point, you can see where the lights and the darks are. Not a lot of details, it's just where are the shadows, where are the highlights. What I'm looking to do is establish structure and some initial organization. And I'll build on top of this. At this point, what I've done is continue to develop the underpainting. I've deepened the shadows and I have a range of high values to middle tones to dark shadows. And this gives me a skeleton for developing the rest of the painting on top of it. The burnt sienna will have a tendency to hold the rest of the painting together as an underlying structure. 
I'm continuing to build on the underpainting by adding in the deepest shadow areas using a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt umber, adding more details and continuing to deepen the foundational shadow areas, which typically I'll paint somewhat transparently. And like with the first painting, I'm kind of working from the background to foreground, the edges to the middle. And you can see there's some additional details that are starting to creep in, like the beard, the hair, uh, the structure of the blankets, the detail and structure of the nightstand area to the right of the bed, and a little bit of structure now to the white chair to the left of the figure. Continuing to refine the background, the edges, uh, a lot more work in the chair to the left, the gray wall color behind the scene is pretty close to being finished. I think I do a little bit of tweaking further on. I've started doing the bookcase behind the figure, the lamp, and the, the boxes are starting to show up, and quite a bit more detail on the nightstand to the right of the bed. So I continue to work and refine the edges, the background, and the foreground. The main piece that still needs to be done is just the figure. The chair to the left of the figure, largely finished. The cushion has quite a bit of definition, and I've added the details that let the cat show up. The bookcase behind the figure is close to being finished, some fine tuning still to be done. The foot of the bed has some shadow detail, as well as the other areas on the bed. There's a highlight now that reveals the object that's draped on the foot of the bed. The bedding with the red and blue quilt, all that has been worked on considerably. And then the nightstand to the right of the bed is close to being finished. The next thing is just going to be to finish the figure and then do some tweaks on some areas to tie everything together. Now worked up the details of the figure, some fine tuning of the other areas on the bed, including the a wad of quilts, the cat, the sweatshirt, the little jacket on the foot of the bed, the highlight, and the fleece has now been defined. I've actually done a little bit of fine-tuning of the color of the floor. The color is about the same, but the texture has been refined a little bit. And I've finally finished up the head of the bed behind the figure and done a little bit more fine-tuning of that bookcase behind the figure and just some other fine tuning kind of to the area to the right of the bed and we're going to call it done anyway hope you enjoyed that uh, thanks for stopping by and uh we'll see you next time um stay safe keep your hands washed and uh good luck to you bye mm -hmm.